The last time we met, we had seen that there were several problems with the great global warming swindle. It claimed that support for anthropogenic global warming was shattering, yet we showed, if anything, the support was going the other way. It claimed that carbon dioxide had never led a warming trend, yet we showed for both the Siberian traps and Snowball Earth that in fact carbon dioxide is the only explanation for what happened. They claim that most of the warming had happened before 1940, yet a simple look at the graph shows that that in fact is not true. They also claim that the medieval warm period is much warmer today, and once again that proved to be a lie. But we only got a few minutes into the great global warming swindle to reveal all these problems. Are there any other problems in the remaining part of the video? And indeed there are. Let's go into some of them now. Well next they turn to the sun, blaming it for global warming. Isn't it bizarre to think humans are causing global warming when you can look up into the sky and see the sun? This is from an emeritus professor, that means you don't get paid, Philip Stott. He's a professor of biogeography, whatever that is, in the School of Oriental and African Studies in the University of London. Now, I went to the University of London and I'm pretty sure that no solar physics paper ever came out of the School of Oriental and African Studies. Next, they say, Solar physicist Piers Corbin used the sun to predict the weather. Corbin has no qualifications in solar physics or meteorology or climatology. He doesn't even have a PhD, although sometimes he claims to have one. He's never republished a research paper in any scientific journal. And so his qualifications to do this are, shall we say, marginal at the very best. And further, his weather predictions are more akin to horoscopes than actually to real meteorological forecasts. So let's see what they have to say about the link between solar activity and climate. They start by claiming that global temperatures and solar activity are correlated, and they show this graph to prove it. In this graph, global temperatures are indicated by this blue-green line, and solar activity is indicated by this orange line. Now, I put activity in quotes because the scale on the right here is not solar activity. It's not sunspot number or total solar irradiance. It's the length of the solar cycle. And as far as I can tell, that has absolutely nothing to do with solar activity. But let's, for the time being, just assume that that is correct. Well, the first thing to notice is that on the solar graph, there are at least 25 inflection points. So that means that they've got measurements for the length of the solar cycle 25 times over. The only problem here is that this graph is 120 years long. And you know that the solar sunspot cycle is about 11.1 years. And if you divide 120 by 11.1, you get approximately 11 cycles. So there should only be 11 points on this graph at the very most. But there isn't. So where do the other 14 points come from? It looks as though they've generated points in order to create an appearance that these two quantities are in fact correlated. Now here's the graph that they are currently showing us uh, trying to tie solar activity to the global temperature anomaly. Now, if you recall, they showed a previous graph with the same quantity on it. Here it is. How do these two graphs compare? In the current graph, the dip around 1880 is minus 0.45 degrees centigrade. Whereas in the right-hand graph, it's minus 0.04 degrees centigrade. The peak at 1940 in the left-hand graph is plus 0.2 degrees centigrade. In the right-hand graph is plus 0.55 degrees centigrade. The dip around about 1970 in the left-hand graph is minus 0.08 degrees centigrade. In the right-hand graph, plus 0.36 degrees centigrade. The peak at 1982 in one is labeled 2000 in the other. And if you notice the dip in the left-hand graph is labeled 1970. In the right hand graph, it is labeled 1975, but right lines up better with 1980. One has to conclude they don't know what they're doing with these graphs at all. So what should this graph look like? Well, first of all, why does it stop in 1980? Well, this documentary was done in 2007, and that is at least 27 more years worth of data, i.e. two solar cycles. And if you put in the modern data when this video was reposted, you could almost have three more cycles. 
So I went to Wikipedia's list of solar cycles and they give the length of each solar cycle. So I've plotted that on this plot here and with a yellow star. And you can see that the shape of my graph looks absolutely nothing like the shape of the orange curve that they have. Now, you will also note that the reason why they truncated that graph where they did is because the next cycle, solar cycle 23, blows their uh, correlation completely apart. If you add in 24, as we've so far, uh, we've been going 10.2 years, and every month that goes by, that star sinks further and further down the chart. Meanwhile, global temperatures have been doing that. So all in all, this correlation is blown apart by the most recent data, which is the one that's most affected by global warming. The next point they try to make is that in the 1970s, the real uh, consensus in those days was global cooling. My, Nigel Calder says, we reported the mainstream opinion at the time, which was global cooling. Nothing could be further from the truth. The only problem was that the, it was not the mainstream of scientific opinion at all in the 1970s. That was global warming. The plot I show on the right shows the number of papers that favoured global warming over global cooling. This shows the number of papers that favour global warming in red and the number of papers that favoured global cooling in blue. And as you can see, the number of papers that favoured global warming vastly outnumbered the number of papers that favoured global cooling. In fact, it was in 1975 that the term global warming was first coined. In a paper by Wallace Broker entitled Climatic Change, Are We on the Brink of Pronounced Global Warming? Uh, that is a very prophetic paper because it was about in 1975 when global warming took off. Well, are you, like me, losing count of the lies so far? And we're not even halfway through the great global warming swindle. More to come in the future. Lie number five was the claim that it was the sun. Now, I've done a lot of videos showing why this is not true. So just go to my channel and look up some of my past videos on this. One I do recommend is one called It's the Sun, Stupid. Lie number six, claiming the length of the solar cycle has anything to do with solar activity. That is not true. Lie number seven, falsifying a graph, adding fictional data points to make the correlation that they claim look better than it actually is. Lie eight, cherry picking a graph, truncating the data before the correlation that they claimed is destroyed by some of the more recent points. Lie number nine, that the consensus in the 1970 was for global cooling. Again, I've done videos on this, just go to my channel and you can look those up. So if you see anybody using any of these weak excuses for disclaiming global warming, then please post a link to this video and tell them they're full of nonsense. Until next time, goodbye.